Namaste my friends and welcome or welcome back. In this most probably the last warm days of November I would like to propose to you the split practice or the Hanumanasana. So if you're ready, join me on the yoga mat. Please take a seated position with your back straight and your legs crossed in any comfortable pose. We close our eyes and we tune towards the practice, doing the inhales and exhales, feeling our body. Calming our mind, bringing all of the attention to the present moment, to this practice, and we will keep this intention and this attention during the whole practice. Relax your forehead muscles, which usually are very tensed. Pull yourself a bit from the top of the crown all the way up. Straighten the back a bit more. With the next inhale, we raise our hands above our head. We unite the palms and bring them in the middle of our chest. If you're practicing the chanting of mantra or you would like to try, we will chant mantra all three times. You can do it out loud or mentally. So the inhale. small incline, the sign of the mutual respect. And we go into the seated position with our back straight, starting with the warming up of our neck, with the exhale bringing the head down, with the inhale up. And we will do two more times. Exhale in, from side to side, trying to bring your ear towards your shoulder. During the whole practice we will breathe with our nose. If you want, you can incorporate the ujjayi breathing or the full yogic breath, the way you prefer now, the twisting, looking to the right and to the left. Now the head goes down, we will do Rounds in one direction and in another. Bringing, rolling the head back. It's an inhale. Forward, exhale. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. And in the opposite direction. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And last time. Inhale. Exhale, bring your hands on top of your head and stretch all the way up with your fingers. Interlock the fingers, open the palms facing up. Stretch a bit more. Couple movements to the right and to the left, elongating the sides of our body. Try to breathe calmly and slowly now once again. Stretching up with the exhale, we twist to the right, bringing the right hand behind of our back and the left hand on our right thigh, gazing all the way behind the right shoulder. Inhale, 
exhale with the next inhale both hands up interlock the fingers stretch your palms towards the air with the exhale we twist to the left bringing the left hand behind the back and the right one on the left thigh gazing behind the left shoulder don't forget the most important is the breathing in the practice and next inhale once more stretching up and release the hands we will start with the Majjhadi Asana pose we go on all fours please be sure that your palms are under your shoulders and your knees are under your pelvis have very nice even lines and we will do simply two movements gazing up nicely arcing the back to warm up our spine with the exhale we gaze towards our navel round the back pushing away with our hands one more time inhale and with the next exhale we go into the downward facing dog if for you it's a difficult pose please keep your knees bent but I encourage everyone to keep the knees bent in the very beginning of the practice it's so much better to start warming up this way I want you to push away with your palms and trying to bring your pelvis all the way up like someone is pushing towards your pelvis from the front shoulder blades are kind of like hugging you all this way so don't try to open your chest over here the most important is to protract the shoulders now bring the right foot in the middle the left one goes all the way up stretching very nicely try to bring it as high as possible keeping the pelvis square breathing if you want or if you cannot straighten your leg you can keep your leg bend in the knee inhale with the axle we bring the weight forward and we bring our knee forward as well this way I know it's a bit tough inhale the leg goes up exhale goes in front try to keep the knee not on the ground so it's in the air you can even do something like this the movement shouldn't be very even like big you know the whole point is to find this nice stretching and also work on our strength a bit with the next exhale we bring our left knee in the middle in between our both hands and we go into the pigeon pose opening our shoulders bringing them up back and down if you have any problems with your back because here it can be a bit challenging you can stay a bit lower this way now with it yeah there is an airport nearby <laughs> Now with the inhale we raise a bit we open the chest with the exhale we go down once again inhale raise exhale down be sure that your knee is looking straight and your heel is near the pubic bone if it's very hard for you to maintain this position you can use a block if you have one if not the pillow will work or the blanket put it under your hip like this and actually it's better to keep it this way if you're not yet very flexible because you will feel a very nice stretching in the front side of your right leg so now we can we stop with uh, the dynamic movements and we go down and we stay here for five long breaths trying to not shift our weight neither to the right nor to the left 
it's nice if the heel is touching the, the bone over here, the pubic bone, or your hip. important in the position to feel that something is stretching, something is working, you're getting there. Yeah, it's very nice to use, use the Ujjayi breathing to calm yourself a bit more. The last inhale and exhale. The next inhale. We'll raise and we'll raise as high as possible, but be sure that the back is not hurting. So the lumbar part of your spine should, should be protected as much as you can. So we go not like this, don't bring the shoulders, simply going all the way with the back straight. I want you to feel the nice stretching in the front side of your leg instead of stretching in your back. Inhale, exhale. One more time. Inhale, exhale. Now we bring the weight a bit forward and we go into the downward facing dog with the exhale. Here you can do some movements with our feet, some paddling. Try to get yourself comfortable. We'll get in this position quite often today. Bring your shoulders down and your shoulder blades all the way hugging yourself from the back and we will do the same on the other side so now the left foot goes in the middle the right one is raising and we're trying to stretch as much as we can stretching the back side of our left leg if not you can keep it bent then as long as you feel the stretching you're doing fine maybe even like this it shouldn't be very high the way you can for today breathing inhale with the exhale bringing the right knee between your hands and going back exhale in front inhale all the way back stretching with your toes all the way up Exhale, working on the core, inhale with the next, exhale, we go down into the pigeon pose, make ourselves comfortable, be sure that you're sitting quite comfortably and you feel the stretching in your front side of the left leg. If you want, once again, put some block or pillow, anything, if you need not to do this position and your right heel is under the pubic bone. So in this position, we're to inhale and exhale. Be sure, be very careful with the lumbar part of the back. Inhale, exhale, with the next inhale. Shoulders raising up, back and down. Gazing maybe even up. And we do some dynamic movements down with the exhale. Up with inhale. Exhale. And inhale. Try to make it like a wave. So working even with your shoulders. And breathing slowly, calmly. With the exhale, we go down and we hold for five breaths. Bring your hands behind you, um, in front of you. And you can bring your forehead on your hands relaxing in this pose relaxing but it's an um, active relaxing i want you still to feel that something is stretching something is working it's not like you can fall fall asleep here because technically practice of yoga is never should be never like really 100 percent pleasant you're working towards the goal you're overcoming your limitations maybe your lack of elasticity or your lack of strength you're evolving thanks to that if you're simply laying down and you feel super comfortable and you can do it forever it's not really evolving it means that you need to 
elaborate and do the next variation of the pose, make it a bit harder for you really to struggle a bit, let's say. <laughs> but trust me, you will love it. The next inhale, and we go with our back straight. And here to inhale and exhale, protecting the back, but stretching nicely the front side of the left leg. Bring your hands in front of you, tuck your toes under off the left foot, and we go into the downward facing dog. The even downward facing dog. Once again, you can do a bit of paddling if you want. The right foot remains on the ground, the left one goes all the way up. And with the next inhale, we bring our left foot in between our both hands and we go into the first warrior. Raising both of the hands up in the air. This is the inhale. The exhale, we go into the Parshvatanasana, going all the way down. If it's hard for you, you can bring your hands or on the thigh, on the shin. You can use two blocks from the both sides. For the one who understood what to do, please, with the inhale, we go up, with the exhale, down. So, exhale, we're trying to forward fold like that. With the inhale, you can even use the blocks like that. We go up into the warrior one pose. Exhale, down. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, we hold for three breaths. Be sure that the pelvis is turned towards the short side of the mat. It's square, don't open it. Don't make the tail, so the tailbone is tucked under. Inhale, straighten both legs and with the exhale, we go into the Parshvatanasana pose. Do the way you can. Once again, you can bring your hands on the blocks. If you don't have the blocks, your thigh will work perfectly fine. If this is hard for you, shorten the distance and simply even stay like that. Feel the stretching of the back side of your left leg. Well, this is close. Turn it a bit. Try to pull also your left leg towards you and the right one kind of like it should be this movement so the left leg is trying to go all the way back the right one is trying to go all the way in front this way it will be a bit harder and a bit more challenging but this is needed for our split for our final split And you can put the blocks not far from you because we will maybe need them once again. Bend the left knee and bend the right one. And we will do the Anjanasana pose. Uh, your toes should be pointing all the way back. The ankle angle in the knee should not be smaller than 90 degrees. Like that maybe. You can be a bit higher. And the hands, they can be or up or in number stay in front of you, or on your sides, like that. Or maybe simply pulling yourself a bit lower. The lower you go here, the better. It's a quite challenging pose, but it's amazing pose to do before any split practice. Try to enjoy, try to smile. Inhale, maybe a bit even arcing if you can. And with the exhale, we don't go into the half triangle pose, Arkhatrikanasana. Here the angle is 95 degrees. You can tuck your toes under of the right foot. And we're gazing forward, stretching once again our left leg. You can relax the, the toes of the left foot, but if you 
point them towards you, it will be a bit more challenging. If you want to feel your hamstrings, if you want to feel your backside of the leg a bit better, to stretch it a bit more. If you can, if your body allows, by the way, you can actually really, like blocks you can use almost anywhere in any position. You can be like here or even here. And once again, I want to remind you that during this practice, it is nice to have this feeling that when your, um, when one of your legs when one of your legs is in front of you and you're stretching it, if you try to have this feeling of pulling this leg like inside of yourself, this will amplify the stretch. Very nice. If it's enough for you, stay here. If not, you can lower yourself on the palms or maybe on the forearms, going all the way down. One more inhale. Exhale. Bring both of the hands in front of you and we raise a bit, we raise the uh, right knee and the pelvis and we bring the left foot into the downward facing dog, our favorite. Push away with your hands, stretch nicely the back side of your legs, bring the pelvis all the way up, nice straight lines. From the hands Till your hips and from the hips all the way to your feet. Inhale, exhale. With the next inhale, we bring the right foot forward and we do the same sequence here. So if you want to use the blocks, use the blocks. With the inhale, we go into warrior one, Virabhadrasana one. With the exhale, we go down. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Another inhale, I will hold the pose. Be sure that the pelvis is square, shoulders are down. You can bring your hands in the mustache if it's too hard. Inhale, straighten both legs with the exhale. We go down into the Parshvatanasana. Bring your hands on the blocks if you need. If not, you can go all the way down in your final position. And have this feeling once again of pulling your right leg towards you and your left one like closing and pulling in front. Do you feel it? I feel it. <laughs> inhale, exhale, inhale. With the exhale, left knee on the ground, and Janasana position. Toes are facing all the way back. You can adjust a bit the distance, maybe it should be shorter, maybe longer. And we're bringing our pelvis in between of our legs. So the hands can be namaste, or you can even hold your thigh this way if it is easy for you, if you prefer. All the way up, maybe. On the sides. Or pulling yourself down. Be careful with the knee. If you have any problem, you can either roll your yoga mat twice, like that, or bring the blanket, the pillow, and put it under the knee. Two more breaths. Open the chest here, don't close it. Inhale, we the exhale, we go into the half triangle pose. 90 degrees. In the knee, in the left leg, you can tuck your toes under of the left foot, 
stretching nicely the back side of your right leg. You can point your to toes towards you. If you want to amplify, use the blocks if you need. Yeah, we're working with our legs in this practice. So anything that will help you to have the stretch a bit better, <laughs> to feel it, feel it a bit more. Maybe all the way down if you feel. On your forearms. One more inhale and exhale with the next inhale we raise we raise our left knee and the pelvis a bit and we bring both of the feet into the downward facing dog inhale exhale i want this pose to become your relaxing pose inhale exhale Push away with your hands, trying to bring both of the heels to the ground, feeling the nice stretching in the back side of the legs. We bring the left leg all the way up. Exhale, and with the next inhale, we bring it in front of us. What we'll do in Pushtan Parishthasana. So we go all the way down, as down as you can, lowering the right knee on the ground. You can also point your toes. And here we can stay, we have some concert. <laughs> and here you can stay as high or as low as you feel like. If you can, please go all the way on your forearms and open nicely your hip and stretch your leg, the left one. If not, Bring the blocks and you can stay here. Important that the left foot remains outside. So it's not like in the same line of your pelvis. It's a bit to the left, let's say. So both of the hands are inside. Now move a bit on the yoga mat this way. Be careful with the knee. You can push, put something under if it hurts, if it bothers you opening and stretching very nicely this part the lizard pose inhale exhale one more inhale and with the exhale we go down we'll bring the pelvis down and we go seated if you don't have any problems with the knee we go into the half warrior pose you can release a bit your calf if the knee hurts, don't go there because it's very challenging toward, to the knee. Then you do the head to the knee pose, the Janusha Shasana. So any variation will work. Here, take the fleshy part out from your buttocks, outside like that. Inhale, both hands raising up with the exhale. We tilt down the way you can. Here, the back is not that important. Important to feel the stretching in the back side of the leg, as always. So you can do it as you prefer. It can also be bend in the knee, as long as you feel that it's stretching, it's working. All the way down. If you can, bring your forehead from inside of your leg. One more inhale and exhale. With the next inhale, we raise and we go all the way to the position that we were before. So I bring my blocks over here, raise the pelvis and downward facing dog. Now we do the same on the other side. So the right leg goes all the way up. With the inhale, we bring it forward to the right from our right hand. And maybe 
Amplify the distance between your legs, between your feet, lower your left knee on the ground, point, point your toes. And you can stay here or use the blocks or go all the way down on the forearms. The way you prefer, as long as you feel comfortable. Sometimes, even if you're very elastic and already you go to split quite easily, it's very useful to use blocks. When I was start, starting yoga, I hated blocks. I was thinking it's for losers. I was so wrong. Now I use blocks so much more. It's an amazing tool. If you don't have blocks, it's not a problem because you can actually use anything that you have at home. You can use a chair. Simply put a chair here, lean on it so that you bring a bit of a pressure and you um, lift yourself a bit so that you can straighten your back, bring your shoulders back and down, release kind of like the pressure on the muscles, on the asha that are not working, shouldn't be working, let's see. Inhale, with the exhale we go down once again, all half warrior pose with your left leg or the Janushachasana, the way you prefer. With the inhale, we raise both hands up and with the exhale, we tilt down. Try to do the same pose on one side and on another. So if you're doing this practice for the second time, for example, um, remember that if you did the easy variation on one side, and you can, the more complicated on another, it's still better to stick with the same. Because we don't want to be sh shifted a bit. We want both of the sides of the body to evolve simultaneously and not to have any disbalance, let's see. Here are two more breaths in this position. Relaxing completely, bringing your attention towards the place of the most discomfort, to the place where you feel the most stretching. With the inhale, we raise and we bring ourselves into the lizard kind of pose once again. From here we go into the downward facing dog and to the cat pose, bringing the knees on the ground. Now um, cross your shins and we roll ourselves into the seated position and going all the way down on our back. On our back, if you have the yoga strap or the belt or anything, please prepare it because it will be very, very useful for what we are going to do. If you know that usually you don't use any bands or yoga straps, you can avoid doing that. So this for now, we want to use going all the way on the back. Bring both of the feet close to the pelvis. And now the right one is straight and facing all the way up. If it's hard, you can keep and bend. I want you to take the yoga strap or the t-shirt, anything, and we kind of like make a lock like this. And we're trying to bring it as close to us as possible, stretching nicely the leg in the laying down position, laying down on our back. You can do some dynamic movements like that. And now we hold three breaths, three very long and very profound breaths. If you would like, you can also straighten the left leg. If not, you can keep it bent. Try to relax completely. Relax your face even. 
the only thing that is working is the stretching of your leg and your hands that are holding the strap if you're using the strap. You can even avoid using the strap if you can grab your toes, for example, or shin or anything. If you prefer this way, you can do it without the strap. But it's a nice thing to use. Inhale, with the exhale, we let go and we change the sides. So now the right foot is near the pelvis, the left one is all the way in the air. And put the yoga band on top and we bring it as close as possible, doing some movements. Yoga strap. Couple movements towards you. And now we hold. If you want, we can outstretch also the right leg. You can even close your eyes and kind of like meditate. Trying to bring it every time with every exhale a bit closer towards you. Inhale and with the exhale we'll let go. Now we won't need this strap anymore, so you can put it away. Hug your knees into your chest, do a couple rollings from side to side, front and back, and roll yourself into the seated position. Now it's time. It's time for the split. As I promised you, we did a lot of preparation work for our legs, but now it's time, guys, I know. So cross your shins and roll yourself into the cat pose. Doing it from the cat pose, it's very comfortable. If you prefer to do it from any other positions that you're already working on, it's perfectly fine. So we bring, uh, we start with the right foot. So we bring the right foot in front of us and the left one remains back and we amplify the distance. Technically what is split is trying to bring one foot as far from another as possible. So this is what we're going to do. For that I want you to use the blocks if you have or two chairs because this is very nice even for quite experienced um, practitioners. So I want you to start doing that and then with the inhale we bring both of our legs towards us, we pull them, kind of like trying to pull the yoga mat towards you. With the exhale, we go a bit lower. So with the inhale, pull. With the exhale, a bit lower. Inhale, pull. Exhale, a bit lower. When you go already into the full split, be sure, and this is the mistake that many do, especially for the beautiful pictures, that your pelvis is square. So. I'm not doing this way. This way it's open, this way it's much easier to do the split, but like there is, it's no use actually. Like the, for the yoga picture, something nice to post, it's nice. But the real split, the Hanumanasana should be when all of the body, all of the pelvis and shoulders are facing forward. This is what we're trying to achieve. In this position, in any position where you um, stay, try to breathe it through. Inhale once again, both of the legs inside. Exhale, let them slide a bit longer, a bit further. In this position, if you're already on the ground, fine. Usually it takes a lot of time to do that. So yes, while I'm talking, you're like holding. <laughs> you're doing that. It's amazing, you're working. If it's very easy for you, you can either go all the way down and fold or bring your uh, back leg like banded in the knee and trying to bring the foot as close to your pelvis as possible to stretch it a bit more which is like quite challenging for now it's simply the split so we're staying here and i want you to breathe five times this is split practice i know it's not easy but like we do five breaths very long inhale through the nose Exhale, if you use Ujjayi breathing, perfect. Do the sound. 
close a bit your throat. This way your breath becomes much more calm and long. Two more breaths remaining. very very slowly there are different ways to exit from the split my favorite actually is to simply roll on the side if your right leg is in front roll on the right side and then bend both of the legs of course you can start going a bit higher you can do bringing yourself on the uh, on your hands and trying to go as high as possible maybe raising your right foot over here but like I prefer the shifting one i believe it's easier so now we'll do the same on the other side and yes it's important to work on both sides usually two, two sides is com are completely different one is much easier and one is much harder but let me know how it is for you so we're doing the cat pose from here and the left leg goes in front the le right one is in the back and amplifying the distance using maybe the blocks or maybe not Inhale, pulling your legs. Exhale. Trying to bring them as further as possible. You can also keep the knee on the ground. Um, this way, I believe it's even easier. You have some support, a bit of support, a bit more support. Inhale, exhale. Inhale. And for me, I would say that this side is more challenging. Yeah, a bit. You can put the blocks the way you want. Exhale. Pelvis is square. Remember, close it, don't open it. With the open one, I can sit forever. With the closed one, it's a bit more challenging. Five breaths, the same as on another side. We're doing so much good to our body by doing these practices instead of sitting and watching TV or doing something else. This will bring you only benefits, especially in the long run. So, good job. One more inhale, exhale. And the way you prefer, I prefer to go all the way to the left. Yoga blocks we won't need anymore. We did an amazing job. We did our split. So bring both of the feet in front of you. Bring our hands behind of our back, fingers facing forward. With the inhale, we raise our pelvis up and we hold the reverse tabletop position. One more inhale and exhale. Very well. Now lay down on the back. We will perform the half bridge. Bring your feet close to the pelvis. Be sure that the, your back is nicely glued to the ground. With the inhale, we raise our pelvis up. And you can stay already here. Or if you prefer, you can do the full bridge by bringing your hands from both sides of your head with the next movement we bring ourselves on our head and then we straighten the, the hands the arms and we hold this position for three breaths if you're doing the half bridge it's perfectly fine if you're doing the wheel pose Inhale, with an exhale, we go down, hug your knees into your chest, do some rolling from side to side. Forward and back and roll yourself into the seated position. Now our favorite, Paschimottanasana. 
both of the hands up and we exhale we tail towards our feet towards our legs relaxing completely in this pose don't think about keeping the back straight or the legs straight simply want you to let go of all of the tension all of the discomfort that there was during the practice and simply enjoy the position five breaths in this position we do all together inhale deep and long exhale one more time inhale and exhale inhale exhale Inhale, exhale, and the last time, inhale, exhale, a bit lower, a bit closer to the legs, yeah, and with the next inhale, we go into the seated position, now the inverted position, if you have any uh, restrictions, um, pregnancy, menstruation, high blood pressure, simply you don't want to, simply go into the Supta Padha Kanasana pose, bringing your feet together, your knees apart, and lay down like this. For the one who are performing the inverted pose, I would like to propose the Viparita Karani Mudra. I don't know if you heard about it or you performed it, but just in case we will do it today and I will explain to you different variations. But I strongly recommend you to use the block. You can use actually two pillows or a pillow, a bolster or something that is high enough. So we go laying down and we bring our feet close to our hips, close to the pelvis. And we raise our hips. Placing the block under our hips. But like it's important not to place it in the lumbar part. Place it almost where the back is finishing and your hips are starting. <laughs> so it, it can be the short side, it can be the long one, the way you prefer. I prefer the long side, the tall one. You can hold the block. If it's stable enough, you can place your hands from the sides of the mat, like that, on the mat. And we raise one leg. If you're afraid, simply do one leg, put it down and raise another one and put it down. If you feel quite comfortable, we'll raise both of our legs up. And we simply hold this position, trying to balance on the block, letting all of the blood flow towards your heart One of the most powerful poses in yoga, actually, because it's called not the pose, asana, it's a mudra or the sign. I really hope that in the end of the practice and already now you feel what it does. It's really incredible, especially when you come from work after the long day, the feeling that it gives to you. It's really incredible, the releasing of the old tensions from the back, from the legs, they become almost weightless. You can also use simply the pillow. Inhale and with the exhale we lower once again both of our legs to the ground, be very careful. Raise your pelvis a bit higher to take away the block or the pillow. And as we're already here in the laying position, we simply go into the Shavasana and relax. We deserved it. We deserve it. <laughs> Bring your hands and your feet at the comfortable distance. Close your eyes. If you need, you can put the socks or cover yourself with a blanket. And 
and focus on your breath and bringing attention to all of the parts of the body scan all of the body from the feet to your hands to your palms relaxing and let it go full of attention your face and you can stay in the Shavasana for as long as you feel like that's already enough we're bringing ourselves on the right side of our body keeping the eyes still closed Doing a couple breaths here, then bring yourself into the seated position with your legs crossed. Do a couple inhale and exhale, bringing your attention to your body, feeling the feelings, what has changed after the practice. What is the overall condition, feeling that you have? With next inhale, we raise our hands up, unite the pulse and bring them in front of our chest. And we chant mantra OM three times out loud or mentally. Inhale. small incline and bring yourself into the seated thank you so much for practicing with me for staying with me on the yoga mat split as any other pose is absolutely achievable by everyone and I strongly believe that simply the consistency is needed and your willingness so practice and you will get anywhere you want. Thank you so much once again. See you on the mat soon. Namaste.